So today we're going to have a look at what happens with some quadrilaterals. To start off with, we'll have a look at the angles. So, we'll look at the angle sum of a quadrilateral. So we're talking about these four interior angles here, and we'll see what happens with them. So, what I've got here is a program where it's got the four angles here. So we've got 62 degrees, 129, 42, and 127. Well, if we add 62 and 42, there's 104. And we add 129, that's 233. And then 333, 353, 360. So those four angles in that quadrilateral add up to 360 degrees. Well, if I make a different quadrilateral, change some things around, and we can have a look at the four angles now. 40 degrees plus 141 is 181 degrees plus another 94 is 275, and we now add 85, we end up with 360 degrees. So the four angles in this particular quadrilateral add up to 360 degrees. So let's change the quadrilateral around a little bit. So I could even do it so it looks very strange. One, two, three, four. It's a bit hard to read this angle up here, but this angle is 207, 130, and if I add these two up as well, that's 7, and we've got 16, and we add those up and we get 360 as well. So it doesn't seem to matter what shape I make the quadrilateral, that the four angles each time will add up to 360 degrees. So what we just found is if we have four angles inside our quadrilateral, when we add them all together, and the word we use in maths is that is the sum, so when we add those four together, we should end up with 360 degrees. Now our reason is angle sum of a quadrilateral. So let's have a look at an example. Find this missing angle, theta. It looks like this one's missing as well, but because there's a little square in the corner, it means it's 90 degrees. It's a right angle. So, quadrilateral, four sides, four angles. When we add those four together, so theta plus 90 plus 75 plus 50, I work around like that. Or I could work around the other way. That way I won't miss any. So just be careful. Don't just go higgledy piggledy. What you need to do is just work your way around so that you don't miss any. And that equal 360 degrees. Don't forget our reason though, so we can show our understanding of why our angle sum of a quadrilateral. So your working out is important and your reason is just as important so that you can explain why you're doing this. Okay, let's add up 90, 75 and 15. We get 215 degrees there. And then let's subtract 215 from both sides, and we'll find this missing angle is 145 degrees. So that's how we use the angle sum of a quadrilateral to find a missing angle. So let's have a look at some more about quadrilaterals. Well, I didn't start off with this yet, but a quadrilateral is a two-dimensional closed figure with four straight sides. And as you saw earlier, I was moving around a shape so we could find the angle sum and we ended up with all different types of four sided figures so four different or many different quadrilaterals that we came up with so examples that you might be pretty familiar with are a kite a trapezium a parallelogram a rhombus a rectangle and a square so we should be fairly familiar with all of these types here. So let's explore um, each type and have a look at what happens with their sides and their angles. First of all, a kite. Well, it has two pair of adjacent sides. Adjacent means next to. So adjacent sides are the sides that are next to each other. So two pairs of adjacent sides are equal and one pair of opposite angles equal. Well, let's look at the sides first. Adjacent, meaning next to, so we've got one pair of adjacent sides equal, and here's our other pair of adjacent sides equal. Now let's have a look at 
pair of opposite angles that are equal? Does it look like these two are the same? They're opposite. They don't quite look the same. It ends up being these two here. So they're our opposite angles that are equal. But that's not the only thing we need to know about a kite that could be quite useful. It has one diagonal and it bisects. Bisects means cuts into two equal pieces. It bisects the opposite angles. So this diagonal cuts this whole angle here into two equal bits. It'll also do the same down here. It'll cut this whole angle here into two equal bits. It also has an axis of symmetry. All right. That long diagonal ends up being its axis of symmetry. Another fact, the di this diagonal, this long one here, also bisects or cuts into two equal bits the other diagonal. So this long diagonal here cuts this diagonal into two equal bits. Also, it's perpendicular. So a little square in the corner that I tried to do there is perpendicular. All right, it's 90 degrees. So this long diagonal cuts this smaller diagonal into two equal bits and cuts it at right angles. So there's some quite useful facts that we might need to use about a kite. So a trapezium also has four straight sides. Let's have a look at some properties about it. It has at least one pair of opposite sides parallel, and we indicate those with our arrows, meaning that they're parallel. It had two pairs of supplementary angles. Because of these parallel lines, there's our transversal. So we have co-interior angles there, and they're supplementary, and co-interior angles there that are supplementary. So there's our first pair of co-interior angles, and there's our second pair of co-interior angles. Okay, here's another trapezium. It looks a little bit different, and I thought I'd put another one to so you know that they look all different. So again, par one pair of parallel lines, at least one pair. What else do we know? Well, a special uh, trapezium is what we call a parallelogram. It has at least one pair of parallel sides. In fact, it has two pairs parallel sides, both the opposite sides are parallel. We can indicate those again with our arrows, they're parallel. And these opposite sides are parallel. Notice I used different amount of arrows this time, so we know that these two are matching and those ones are matching. What we also find is the opposite sides are not only parallel, but they're equal in length. So these two sides are equal and these two sides are equal. Also, our opposite angles are equal. So this angle here is equal to that angle there. Then this angle here is equal to that angle there. So those two are the same and those two are the same. So let's have a look at what happens with our diagonals. So we've got rid of those markings from the angles. And we have there's one diagonal and there's our other. And the diagonals in a parallelogram bisect each other. Remember, bisect means cuts into two equal pieces. So this diagonal cuts this one into two equal bits, and this diagonal cuts this one into two equal bits. But they're not all the same length. These two are the same, and these two are the same. There's no axis of symmetry for a parallelogram. Even though I can cut it into half, like these diagonals cut them in half, this will not flip over onto that. Or if I cut it that way, or horizontally, they will not flip onto each other. So no axis of symmetry, but I can spin it around for uh, to spin back onto itself. So it does have point symmetry. Okay, let's have a look at a rhombus. It's called a rhombus, and if I spin this around to look like that, some of you in primary school will call that a diamond, but it's not a diamond. We're going to call it its proper name, a rhombus. Yes, I know in cards, the red one is a diamond, but its proper name is a rhombus. So let's have a look. It's a special parallelogram. 
that again has opposite sides parallel and opposite sides equal. Okay, two pairs of adjacent sides, so the sides next to each other are equal. That equals that, and we know that opposite ones are equal, so that must be the same as well, so must that. So all sides are equal in a rhombus. The opposite angles are equal, just like a parallelogram. So those two are equal, and those two are equal. We also have two pairs of supplementary angles. So we've got current angles because of the parallel lines, and current angles that way. I could also work this way. They're current and so are these. And remembering, all four angles will sum to 360 degrees. So let's have a look at the diagonals. The diagonals bisect or cutting these angles into two equal bits. So they opposite angles into equal bits. Same with the other diagonal. Cuts this whole angle into two equal bits. Same with that. And remember, because the opposite angles are equal, when you cut them both in half, these smaller bits must all be, also be the same. Okay, some more things about the diagonals. They're perpendicular bisectors. Perpendicular means 90 degrees. There we have it, 90 degrees, and cuts them into two equal bits. Okay, so those two are now equal, and these two bits are now equal. So there's some things about a rhombus, a couple more things. There are two axes of symmetry for a rhombus, the diagonals. Okay, so this half will fold onto that half, or this half will fold onto that half. Okay and it also has point symmetry. Let's quickly move on to a rectangle. It is also a special parallelogram and it has one right angle. So opposite sides are parallel and opposite sides are equal. It has one right angle. Now remember, these were co-interior, these angles, and if that's 90 degrees, then that must also be 90 because it's supplementary. And opposite angles are also equal. So we end up with our all angles being 90 degrees, in fact, all right angles. Opposite sides are equal in length. Our diagonals, they're actually equal in length this time. These diagonals, this diagonal here and this one, are both equal in length. They cut each other in half, but you'll notice that's not a right angle. So they're not perpendicular bisectors. They just cut each other in half. And there are two axes of symmetry in a rectangle. The diagonals are not axes of symmetry. Yes, they cut them into half, but this half will not fold onto that half. So there's some special things about quadrilaterals and a rectangle. And we've got one more to go through, and that's a square. So a square, remember, I could make this particular shape move around, but to make it look a different orientation, it's still a square. No, it's not a diamond. So it's a rectangle with two adjacent sides equal, meaning these sides are equal. Opposite sides are parallel. Okay. All angles, right angles. All sides are equal in length. The diagonals are also equal, like the rectangle. Now, when they bisect these angles, remember that was 90 degrees, that must mean that they're 45 degrees. I could do that for all the angles, all would be 45 in there. The diagonals are also perpendicular bisectors, they cut each other into mm -hmm. half, and also meet at 90 degrees. And there are four axes of symmetry for a square, one, two, and the diagonals as well. And it also has point symmetry. So there's a lot to remember there, all about some different types of quadrilaterals, many of which you'd be fairly familiar with, and others might be a little bit new to you. Okay, we'll need these for later on.